morning and good afternoon one final time from Mission Control Houston and welcome to our live coverage of the hatch opening of the Soyuz MS-16 spacecraft currently docked to the International Space Station as we get ready to welcome three new crew members aboard the orbiting laboratory. Once more, we're coming to you live from the flight control room number one, Ficker One, the usual space station flight control room here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Inside the room right now, still the Orbit 2 team, and they are being led today by Flight Director Pooja Jezrani. She's right there in the middle of your screen. She's going by the call sign of Unity Flight. She's coordinating all of the teams here in Houston, responsible for overseeing the systems on board the International Space Station. Just above her is NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins. She's serving as the Capcom for this shift. She'll be the voice communication link between our teams here in Houston and the crew on board. And just a quick update, the crew is stepping through all of their final leak checks. Uh, following a successful docking, they kick off uh, essentially about two hours of leak checks and vestibule pressurization. So uh, they actually fill that space between the Soyuz spacecraft and the station hatch, which is normally exposed to the vacuum of space with atmosphere. And once that gets pressurized, they have to equalize that. So you have to have equal pressure in that vestibule on board the Soyuz spacecraft and on the station before you can get those hatches open and obviously making sure there are no leaks in any of the seals between the vehicle and the spacecraft. So we're still going through those leak checks. We have a couple more minutes to go uh, until they get some final pressure readings and then we'll begin that equalization process and then there's a couple of minutes on the end of that as well. We were initially targeting a, a hatch open time of right around 11.15 uh, a.m. Central Time We'll slide around with that uh, as the pressure checks continue on. The crew on board the Soyuz spacecraft, though, are on the other side of this hatch that we're looking at right now. And they are NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy and Russian cosmonauts Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner. He's there on the right, Ivanishin in the center, the Soyuz commander, and on the right or on the left, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy. And in just a couple of minutes, they're going to be joining the Expedition 62 crew on board the station with two NASA astronauts, Jessica Meir and Andrew Morgan and Alex Kropochka. They've all been on board uh, for different times. Uh, Drew Morgan's actually been on board for about 263 days. And then uh, Christina and Oleg have been on board for just uh, over 197 days. They're scheduled to remain on board the station for about another week, and then they'll be coming home. And then the crew that just arrived today will be the only ones on board until we get another human space flight launch. The next one on our schedule is going to be that Demo-2 flight, uh, currently targeted for mid to late May. And that'll be bringing uh, Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley up to the station. Uh, but for now, we are standing by for this hatch opening, you're getting a look inside of the Poisk module, and you're going to see Alex Kropochka, the current station commander, floating into view. He's just there at the bottom. He's been setting up the camera and getting the hatch ready on the station side. Uh, there are two hatches that we'll see open. First, we'll see him open the station hatch, and that'll actually reveal uh, the very top of the Soyuz spacecraft, where we were looking at it in the vacuum of space just a few hours ago the docking probe and the other antennas uh, located around it. Uh, it's currently attached. The docking probe has been retracted. And then once these leak checks are complete, we'll be able to get these hatches open and the crew on board. This is the ISS pressure. All right, step 10.9.3, RPV-1, airflow regulator 1 is closed. Vanya, Ivan, could you please send S5 command? Yes, please send S5 command, and uh, then in one minute send S6 command. S5 uh, issued at 19.04.45, and I confirm that LED is illuminated.
visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control Houston, Tom Erkinswick today is leading the team of flight controllers, both uh, a support team here in Houston and over in Moscow, um, getting data and feedback from the Russian flight control team and feeding that uh, to the uh, flight controllers here in Houston in Ficker 1. Just hearing that the leak checks have been completed. Now they're beginning the pressure equalization step. So you need to make sure that you have equal pressure uh, on both the station and the Soyuz hatch sides and then also in that vestibule, that space in between. And then if that, once those pressures are equal or within a, a tolerable range of being equal, uh, they'll be able to actually get these hatches open. So leak checks in the rear view, equalization on board now. And following that will be hatch opening. Open, uh, no, no, no stop. Stand by. Okay, copy. Standing by. All right, so stand by for uh, ISS hatch uh, opening. All right, standing by. And again, the first hatch we expect to be open will be on the station side. There are two hatches, one on the station, one on the Soyuz. Alex Kropochka there in the Poisk module will first open up the station side hatch. Looks like he's getting into position to start that maneuver now. And then after they finalize the pressurization, equalization between the Soyuz and the station, they'll be able to open up the Soyuz hatch. Uh, in the time since they've docked, in addition to doing all of these leak checks, uh, the crew able to get out of their Soka launch and entry suits that they've been wearing since suiting up prior to their launch. And there we see the station side hatch is open. And looking at the very top of the orbital module on the Soyuz now. Um. Irkuta, this is Moscow. A year ago, uh, to proceed with step 10.9.3, the actions that are in the box. Okay, copy all. Opening KKT and KVD valves. Yes, go ahead and open KKT valve and KVD as well. Okay, so we're going to uh, repress uh, the ISS with uh, the air. Did you open KKT and KVD valves? And having a quick handover, so a quick transition in our Audio, video, and telemetry reception with the station as we hand over between uh, the tracking and data relay satellites that deliver all of that uh, data from the station back down to us on the ground. You're getting split box views of the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov just outside of Moscow. They've been overseeing all of the operations from the Soyuz uh, MS-16 vehicle today from launch all the way through this docking and now hatch opening. On the right, a look inside of Ficker 1. Orbit 2 team still on console. They have been on board uh, since a couple of hours before the actual docking, overseeing all the final uh, preparations of the station. Again, Flight Director Pooja Jezrani leading the team this morning. Please be ready to uh, note it down, and uh, I will uh, uh, tell you what the recommendation is. Okay, ready to copy now. Ready to copy? Yes. 
So first of all, you will have to deactivate the Soyuz. This is orbital flight ODF, page 25-38, step 4. Orbital flight 25 through 28, step 4, yes, that's affirmative. Second item, do not deactivate the gas analyzer. Orbital flight ODF, page 36, step 4.5 is not to be executed. Orbital flight, page 36, step 4.5 is not to be executed, and gas analyzer is not to be deactivated. That's correct. Next item, you will have to uh, change out the uh, cartridge in the sub, page 35, uh, 4.3. So you're supposed to switch pair 1 with pair 3. Page 35, step 4.3. Three, and what's next? So replace P1 with P3. Is that correct? Yes. Affirmative. So while the crew inside the Soyuz continues to step through these final equalization procedures, let's take a couple of moments. You guys have been sending in questions on Twitter using that hashtag AskNASA ever since our launch this morning. We'll try and burn through a couple here real quick. Uh, our first one comes from my Miriam, my vet, who wanted to know what will be the first task upon boarding the International Space Station. Well, first task on board will be to just greet their crew members and they'll gather in the Russian service module and exchange a couple of words with the teams on the ground, uh, both in Moscow and in Houston. And then actually the first scheduled task for all of these crew members will be a midday meal. Uh, it's been several hours since the crew on the Soyuz 8 prior to getting suited up and leaving uh, on their trip into space. And then for the crew already on board the station, it's right at midday meal time for uh, their normal sleep schedule. So they'll all share that together. And then it'll actually move into what's known as a safety briefing. So it's customary that uh, the International Space Station commander gives all newly arrived crews a safety briefing that typically lasts about 45 minutes where they just do a refresher on all the particulars of reacting to an emergency on board station, uh, where your routes are to your Soyuz spacecraft, where all the emergency equipment is, and just walking through it with all of the crew members. Could you please Next question comes from Sid, who wanted to know, is this going to be the last usage of the Soyuz for space station travel? A number of you sending in questions asking, uh, if this is the last time we'll have American astronauts on a Soyuz, or uh, will we only be flying on the new commercial spacecraft from SpaceX and Boeing? Uh, and the answer is no, uh, this will not be the last usage. Uh, the intention is to continue to fly Americans on the Soyuz, and then also to fly Russians on the uh, commercial crew vehicles coming online as part of our commercial crew program. Uh, we always want to maintain a the U.S. and a Russian presence on board the station, as those nations are the ones most um, Next item. Uh, most well trained and most in tune with the various systems on the different segments. Um, and so, in order to keep that mixed crew, we're going to have to fly mixed crews on these different vehicles. Uh, so we fully intend uh, to continue flying Americans on Soyuz, and to eventually fly Russians on the U.S. commercial crew vehicles. And then a lot of people uh, sending in the uh, very pertinent questions about any risks of the crew spreading COVID-19 to the International Space Station or what we've done to protect them. And the answer is we really have a very robust health stabilization program is what it's referred to. So it's essentially a very strict quarantine for these crew members in the weeks leading up to their International Space Station flights. Uh, a couple of typical pre-launch activities were either scaled back or changed, uh, largely ceremonial in nature, things like media briefings or visits to Red Square. Uh, but their quarantine procedures didn't really get that much of a change. Uh, the amount of individuals in the general area around the crew uh, was scaled back. We saw with 
uh, all of the rollout video of the crew leaving the hotel. There was a much smaller footprint of individuals down there in Baikonur, um, just due to all of the current travel restrictions. Uh, but we do have this stabilization plan already in place that requires a quarantine for these crew members just uh, even in normal times to prevent them from bringing any uh, bugs, viruses, things like that up to the space station with them and um, potentially getting their other crewmates sick as they're essentially living in this closed environment. Um, and so thanks to already having a lot of those robust procedures in place, we're very confident that we're able to launch these crew members safe and healthy and ready for their six months stays on board the International Space Station. Uh, there are certain actions that are... Altered Miscellany wanted to know how often they get to talk to their families uh, pretty regularly, uh, and then they'll have regularly scheduled uh, video conferences with friends and family down here on the ground uh, using a lot of different communication tools that would be very familiar to you or I down here on planet Earth, uh, essentially using uh, video calling and even voice over IP, very similar to uh, what we get, and it ends up functioning just like calling somebody on a cell phone. Um, so they're able to get that on board the International Space Station. They also have access to email, um, so they're able to regularly send and receive messages from family on the ground, and they can do that every single day. Our next one comes from Alex. He wanted to know how good is the Internet on the International Space Station? The Internet is serviced like all of the uh, data transfer from the station by our tracking and data relay satellites. It's a constellation in orbit around the Earth uh, that they're able to use to send data, send video, uh, like we're getting right now, uh, also send voice communications, but also use the Internet. The, inter uh, the astronauts able to browse the web on board and the station right now, uh, thanks to upgrades in 2019, supports a 600 megabit per second connection. Okay. So uh, it's getting more common to have gigabit connections down here on planet Earth, so not quite that fast. Uh, but considering they're orbiting about 250 statute miles over planet Earth, it's definitely fast enough. And that's handling all of the video coming down from station, all of the science data, uh, all of the files being uplinked to the crew. Um, so 600 megabits. Uh, our next question comes from Claire C. Wanted to know why the backup crew are being used. Um, that is because uh, one of the crew members that was originally slated to fly encountered a medical issue in some of the final stages of training. And since these crew members were getting some special training, um, as uh, when uh, Andrew Morgan and Jessica Mir leave, along with Alex Kropochka, well, we'll only have one USOS crew member, uh, that's Chris Cassidy on US stands for the US operating segment. Um, it's really the, the half of the International Space Station that has the, the US sponsored modules along with some from our international partners. Um, and for certain things like spacewalks, which uh, we have different systems, different suits, different procedures on the US side and the Russian side. Uh, so the Russian crew members getting some special training um, in those procedures, um, in particular one of the crew members um, in each, the prime and the backup crew, getting that training. And since uh, these backup crews are essentially a pair, uh, when one crew member had a medical issue, they had to swap out both. And so that's why the backup crew was used on this flight. But uh, as we heard, pre-launch Anatoly Venetian and Yvonne Wagner uh, training just alongside with the prime crew for this over the last two years. So they were very well prepared and ready to support their stay on board the station. Copy, thank you, 736. And we haven't forgot about hatch opening again. They're still working through this pressure equalization. It can take a couple of minutes. Uh, so we're just gonna continue to stand by. We should be seeing that Soyuz hatch open in just a little bit. And then we'll see Chris Cassidy, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Von Wagner make their way into the International Space Station. But for now, back to Twitter. We've got some more Ask NASA questions. Tom Dang wanted to know what the grid fin on the fairing of the Soyuz launch vehicle does. Good eye and good question. Um, if you do remember uh, that Soyuz, there are grid fins. They're basically large uh, structures on the launch shroud area 
Um, so the very top of the rocket has a large white area with the launch escape tower on top and then a shroud that protects the Soyuz during that ride uphill. And there are four grid fins um, that are attached to the side. Uh, those are stabilizers, so in the event of what's known as a phase one abort, so using that prime uh, abort tower on top uh, and the solid rocket motors on the fairing itself, those stabilizers are deployed in order to basically be attitude control, a stabilizer to ensure the vehicle doesn't go into a roll and is able to ensure uh, a good pitch. Okay, copy. That's great. And uh, we're standing by for uh, the pressure drop to stop at the two minute interval. This is page 80. Well, it's not really dropping, it's just decreasing. Well, okay, copy. Let's stand by for it to stop decreasing then. Because when you say uh, the pressure is dropping, it just sounds too scary. Copy. Uh, we'll take that into the account for the future. And if I understand it correctly, uh, we're supposed to exit, we're going to have a PO event, and then uh, after the video conference, we will uh, do the deactivation steps. Is that correct? That's affirmative. Uh, but uh, after the event, you will have to get back to the Soyuz and deactivate com assets per page 82 and install the cap, etc. We have already discussed it with you. This is page 82 in your ODF. Okay, so we will exit everyone, and then we're getting back to the vehicle, to the Soyuz, uh, complete all the actions per page 82, and then switch to ascent steps. Yes, that's correct. All right. Irkut, this is Moscow, and we're standing by for another pressure reading. All right. Okay, 735 is the current pressure reading. 735, copy. And it looks like, okay, 735, yes. Well, just put it there for now. Okay, so we're going to exit now and hug everyone. And then I will uh, come back here, uh, deactivate everything, and uh, uh, we're going to have some kind of a video conference from the SM. And please smile. Okay, I will deactivate everything. Do not worry about it.
Тут много чего еще надо сделать. We still have a lot to do here. Иркут, this is Moscow. Uh, we are standing by for another pressure reading. Well, it is still sort of decreasing. Seven three four is the reading. Copy. Circus, this is Moscow. What is the current pressure reading? It is stable. 735. Copy and Irkutsk. Uh, you're going to close KKC and KVD valve, then you can open BOSU uh, hatch cover. KKT, KVD valves are closed now. Okay, opening the cover now. Okay, handle is installed. Getting ready to open the hatch. Okay, press it. Okay, got it. Hatch is open. Let's see. Okay, and just uh, uh, go ahead and move over there. That's where the hatch is. And please smile. Moscow, this is Irkut 1. The hatch is open. Copy. Excellent. Great news. All right, and as you can see, the hatch is open. Von Wagner first through, Chris Cassidy just behind him, making his way his third trip to the International Space Station. That hatch open coming at 11.28 a.m. Central Time, 12.28 p.m. Eastern Time, 16.28 GMT. And last but not least, Anatoly Venetian, also a third time space flyer, making his way on board the station. Again, that hatch was opened at 11.28 a.m. Central, while the station was flying just about, just under 270 statute miles over the Indian Ocean, just off the west of Australia. Moscow, this is Irkut 1. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm in 
a sem no, not in the SEM. I'm actually in the Soyuz, and uh, I am executing steps on page 82. Okay, copy. Uh, so, guys, we're going to say goodbye at this point. Uh, thank you very much for all your work today. Anatoly, uh, how do you read me? Yes, I can read you now. So I just wanted to thank you for all the work you did today, and I'd like to wish you a successful flight. Thank you for your words, and also thank you for your support. Have a great day. All the best to you. Thank you, and my best regards to you as well. MBS, hardline con. Yes, Moscow, I'm uh, signing off and deactivating Soyuz Com assets. Goodbye now. Goodbye. This is Mission Control Houston. Another quick handover should be getting that video signal back with the station momentarily. We are going to stand by for just a few more minutes. We are still looking to see if we're going to get some words uh, from the newly arrived crew and hopefully some congratulations from here in Houston. So continue to hang with us. Big event though, hatch open, and we're starting to see our crew members inside of the Zvezda service module, right there in the front on the left. Quick reflexes, Chris Cassidy. Please to ground one. How do you read us? Okay, I says Mission Control Moscow. Please to ground one. Congratulations on arriving to the station. We can see you guys. This is a good picture. Anatoly is not somewhere. He was sent. He was sent to the uh, vehicle to deactivate something.
and right there on our first view of all three of the newest crew members of Expedition 62 on board the International Space Station. Mission Control Assist, Space to Ground 1, we are ready. We can see as well, we are ready as well. Mission Control Moscow, good day to you, good day to you. What can we say? We are very happy that Soyuz 63 arrived here with no issues. And I, I understand this is that we are self-isolated self here on the station. We are ready for handing over, and after that, we are going to leave the station in the good hands. Uh, we are very happy that we have arrived to the station. Uh, uh, just a month ago, it was uh, unexpected for us. We didn't know we were going to be here. We started preparing. We were training. And everything worked out well. Uh, we are here. Uh, the vehicle uh, performed there. Excellently. The station is great. We can only confirm again that uh, the technology is operating well. Uh, we are happy to be here on the station. Uh, we are not going to spend much time with them, but this is going to be a great time. Uh, good day to you. Congratulations. Wish you to perform and complete the program. Perform well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, a word to Mission Control Houston. Houston, this is Station. Hello, how are you doing? Station Houston, we just wanted to say congratulations to the entire crew and the teams on the ground that made this all possible. Chris and Anatoly, congrats on your third successful arrival at the International Space Station, and a special special congrats to Yvonne on his first. For Chris, it was a stunning launch and docking, and while we wish we had everyone to see you off from Baikonur, we know your family and friends and your NASA family were watching the whole way and couldn't be more proud. You were the 500th human in space, former chief astronaut, upcoming space station commander, and when Drew and Jessica leave in a week, our lone man on the U.S. segment. There's nobody better for the job, and the flight control team can't wait to get to work with you. Welcome aboard. Hey, Jessica, thanks a lot. It really means a lot to be back here and uh, representing all of the Johnson Space Center and all of NASA, really, to get this mission going. It's going to be a really exciting year um, in our manned space history for all the obvious reasons, and uh, we hope to start that off at some point by welcoming Bob and Doug. But for today's purposes, the launch was great. We, as Anatoly said, the, the spaceship worked beautifully, and uh, we're just really happy to, to get here. Thanks for kind words, Jessica. Those are good words, Chris. Thanks so much. I said, crew, this is uh, SRP Alexei Buchilin. How do you read me? Congratulations to you. 
поздравляю с экипаж, что собрались вместе. Uh, finally, the crew is together. Uh, Alex, the crew here. Uh, they waited for you. They are finally here. And uh, you are uh, from our department. We are very happy to have you there. We wish you have great time there and perform the program as scheduled for you. Wish you all the best and all the luck. And congratulations one more time. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Solovyov. Uh, I congratulate you from the bottom of my heart. Alec, tomorrow, uh, 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 Natalia Korolov, daughter of uh, Sergei Korolov, uh, has a birthday. It would be great if you say a few words on her birthday, and we're going to let them know, okay, for her birthday. Will you? Yes, of course. Uh, our whole crew, 62, and the new crew from 63, from the bottom of our hearts, uh, happy birthday. Uh, Natalia is a great uh, scientist and a great uh, physician, has done a lot for uh, cosmonautics, for reaching out. And uh, we wish you, uh, Natalia, uh, long years, uh, success and everything from uh, the whole crew of us. Happy birthday to you. Спасибо. Thank you. I say, Mr. Moscow, Space to Ground One. So we will wrap up uh, this uh, beautiful event and uh, make yourself comfortable. Have uh, a good meal together. Bon appetit. Thank you. All right, well, with that event completed, we are now back at six human beings living and working on board the International Space Station. They'll be at full strength for about a week before it's time for three of those crew members 
to return home. Uh, just recapping a couple of our major milestones with today. The crew launched successfully from the Baikonur Cosmodrome at 3.05 p.m. Central, a.m. Central Time, 4.05 a.m. Eastern, 8.05 GMT. They were able to dock just a little over six hours later at 9.13 a.m. Central, 10.13 a.m. Eastern, 14.13 GMT. And those hatches were just thrown open a little under 20 minutes ago at 11.28 a.m. Central, 12.28 p.m. Eastern, 16.28 GMT. Bringing a start to uh, Chris Cassidy, uh, Anatoly Ivanishin, and Ivan Wagner's time on board the International Space Station. But again, they're only going to be on board with their other three crewmates for about a week. And then it's going to be time for Drew Morgan, Jessica Mir, and Alexi of... Uh, Alex Kropochka to come home. And we're going to be bringing you live coverage of all of that activity as it unfolds on Thursday, April 16th. We'll actually start off that day with uh, farewell and hatch closure coverage. That'll be at uh, 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern time, and then eventually moving into that undocking coverage where we'll see them undock from the uh, International Space Station to begin their journey home. And that'll conclude with our deorbit burn and landing coverage in the late night, 11 p.m. Central, midnight Eastern. So be sure to tune in to NASA TV and at nasa.gov slash live and follow us on all of our social media accounts to get updates on the mission as they come through. One final time, uh, some of our upcoming coverage uh, for the rest of the day, we'll have a video file recapping all of the docking and hatch opening events that you just watched unfold live coming up later at 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern on NASA TV. And as we close, we would just like to thank everyone that tuned in today to watch three humans launch from planet Earth to their new home for the next six months in space. Human spaceflight is a venture that's only possible when a lot of people work together to do the things that are hard. And what we just watched today was the culmination of a countless hours of labor and dedication from human beings working in concert around the globe. In this time of distress, hope today was heartening, inspiring, or even just a welcome distraction for all of you staying at home, doing your part to help those working tirelessly to combat this pandemic. And so one final time, signing off, stay healthy, stay safe. This is Mission Control Houston. Oh.